cool sorry for a, for a second i had a double uh a double audio thing going on with the discord as well oh yeah I have a... <laughs> uh but we're just on zoom now all right that should be good you getting extra feedback or go good no all good now all good i think it was <laughs> yeah just the two calls going at the same time yeah yeah i guess this is this isn't coming through uh i think it might be coming through your laptop actually because that's not making a noise yeah good yeah, we were, okay uh, hopefully uh recording won't be too bad <laughs> but don't want to take up too much of your time <laughs> no there's no problem uh so it's, it's it's timmy is that right yeah yeah cool yeah just making sure um yeah i'm matt but as i said i i, I kind of go with socket to me just for clarity usually with people who listen to my music because they get confused i think otherwise and um yeah, a lot matt, of people, uh, yeah I yeah a lot of people also say socket home but <laughs> yeah i actually just only came across the video i went all the way back and i was scrolling through some earlier ones and came for the video that you actually introduced yourself yes uh, yeah yeah i think so, yeah, it was a bit so, overdue <laughs> I, it was very interesting though to me because like i kind of listened to western music a bit late so like oh awesome this is a lot of like, new stuff to me um yeah obviously i had like a whole introduction written and everything to make it all very exciting um but technology obviously is complicated <laughs> up for us. um but luckily we got it working um yes. but i guess let's make up for lost time and jump into it yeah let's um, do it yeah, well, first of all, thank you again um, for making your time available for me. Um, no, thank you for having me. Yeah, um, like I found your music on Instagram through one of the algorithms. Like, real oh, right. Oh, music. Instagram, yeah, of course. Yeah, so yeah. it was actually one of the little reels you did for End Run. Yes, yeah. And it was like one of the ones on 28th of March, like, Kind of wedged between like you posted on 28th of march where you were wedged between like some woods yeah 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 and it was just, you know, <laughs> like that moment it was um time to just the bgging part of the lyric oh yeah 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 and then i was like in the video i was like all right this is the profile i'm gonna follow <laughs> yeah i thought that was um, a really great part of the song oh uh, yeah it's i it was one of those parts of the songs that i um i i waited way too long to start using but I, I i have this habit of making a whole bunch of uh like videos for my social media so i've got this like backlog and then eventually when i get around to doing more i'm like oh okay i can do this other part but it takes so long to get around to doing it sometimes but um yeah, yeah no it was a... <laughs> yeah um, i do that sometimes as well i guess yeah. i feel like because it's harder to kind of get to the shooting i guess Whereas editing, yeah, yeah. You kind of get around it on different notifications. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was great. I, I mean, I, yeah. Is that what you were saying? No, I was just going to say I can. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll always have like, like time to edit later down the line. But getting people, getting time to film or find someone who can film with me is always the uh, a bit of a hurdle in the do whole process. Yeah. Do you generally need someone with you for like filming? Uh, if if it's those sort of videos where I'm like uh out in the countryside or something i usually need someone behind the camera just so they can see that i'm in shot but also um just like stop and start recording because like i'll constantly run out of memory on my phone or something or i need to play the track as well um it seems silly because my i i try to keep the videos like super simple um and yeah it always feels like this like weirdly complicated process i don't know why but um, it is very basic, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, now that you're like talking about it, it makes sense because you're playing, I guess, because you have to lip sync to the actual song. Like, so that time yeah, time. yeah. And you're doing so many different cuts as well. Yeah. It's you so know, funny as well because I used to be uh, in, uh, when I was in Wales, I'm recently sort of moving, hence why I'm in this room and it's all a little bit, uh, well, I've cleared it for the, for the sake of this, but it's all a little bit of a mess. But um, uh, in Wales, you'd go out into countryside and it would just be empty. There's no one there. Um, which is where I was comfortable just like singing along to my song. Whereas I've come back to England and people constantly stop. And then before you know, it, you've got like 10 people watching you like lip sync a song or something. I mean, I, I, I am singing, but it's just, it's, it's been something I've had to get comfortable with, but 
it's a really bizarre thing. I don't know whether they're thinking I'm an idiot or whether they're like, okay, this is cool or not. But yeah, it's a it's it's a new thing for me. <laughs> that, that was actually one of the questions I had like further down, like on the list. But like, it is something that's not, not many people talk about. I guess when you're starting out, at some point, you mm. sort of transition from being on your own making music or like you start yeah. to actually going out there and starting to perform for I guess, 10 people and then suddenly gradually, gradually growing bigger. But, yeah. you know, some people are just naturally more confident with that. Some people have to make that transition. Mm. I mean, for me, good. like, it, I, I've, I mean, I've done quite a lot of performing over the years, but it's been more uh, based around uh, performing covers at gigs or um, especially in Wales, I used to do it a lot. And, you know, occasionally you do your own song. And I got really comfortable doing that. It took me a long time. I'm not naturally uh, confident in those scenarios or like a, uh, I love playing. It's just like talking and engaging with people that sort of taking me a bit more time. But when it's come to doing, yeah, filming TikToks or whatever it is in public, that that has been like a whole other thing for me because it's it's even more uncomfortable Play, you know you've, you've you're stood there with an electric guitar that isn't plugged in and mm -hmm. like your main focus is to i guess move and just make sure you're lip syncing the words but you're not necessarily always in tune or you're like a mile away from the speakers so you can hardly hear it and i don't yeah i just i'm just thinking the whole time I'm like, i i have no idea what these people are thinking that are stopping and watching or um <laughs> whereas when you're performing at the very least you can have like this back and forth with the audience where they're like yeah one more or they're like just stop <laughs> but it's you know it's 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 a like people are either too like quiet or they're too supportive yeah exactly but um yeah it's just it's just different with TikTok. i think i don't know if it's something you've experienced but like i remember before i was on social media i you know you'd see people filming these things in public and you're like oh that makes me feel really uncomfortable or um i was just about to say did you have like do you get secondhand cringe when you're watching someone do something and you're kind of like oh i don't know if i, I used to i used to but i think now that i have to do it i get it a bit more some people are more naturally cringy i think <laughs> like i guess like um some people you know, have so much confidence that they they maybe pu push it a bit too far, or they don't have enough confidence that makes it cringy. And I feel like I'm still re trying to find that sweet spot because I I can't watch my videos; they make me cringe. So. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, but, I guess with like people who produce like creative stuff, one of the problems is one kind of don't watch your own stuff for some people. And yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if there are that many people that talk about they love watching that. Um, the other thing is sometimes people just get bored of this stuff because you have to kind of work on it over and over again to that point. Where yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like I don't think I can actually do more of this. Yeah, I can't handle listening to that song yeah. one more time. I mean, like I know with video editing, people like editing videos like that. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm so sick of like listening to the same two lines for like the <laughs> time. Yeah. But like I don't know if music like that's one of the things that I'm kind of curious about. Like, if do you think like artists is after they working as an artist for 10 years they'll look back at their first songs and be like yeah mm, it's pretty like eh. like <laughs> do, you know skill level is obviously different lyric writing you might have improved significantly yeah do you ever feel that way about like your earlier songs um i think if you go back far enough absolutely like there like you write especially when you're starting out you write the cringiest things or the most you know you th i don't know i don't know if it's the thing that every songwriter goes through but you go for me and a lot of people i know you go through a phase of over complicating it and you're like yeah. you're just like we're throwing up a dictionary of words because <laughs> you're like oh this is so yeah. deep and i'm this is so meaningful um and you yeah there's a lot of stuff before i started releasing stuff under socket to me but i think as far as everything i've done so far i think just because music is my passion uh in general i like to from my perspective see it as like a journey of 
you know there's some sort of progression there and people can see how it started i guess and i'm sure it's the same for people who make like who do full-time content creation on social media where they're like oh, i'm really proud of that first video um and maybe they don't get that same feeling but like i think as far as for me i didn't start off as a content creator for social media it was all about the music and that's kind of why i think it's uh i'm not it's taken me a bit more time to get to somewhere i'm like more invested or proud of those things that i'm doing but as far as the music yeah i'm 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 more uh uh tolerant sounds like the wrong word but i'm more tolerant of my older stuff now but it's kind god of like yeah a... if you heard some of that stuff so <laughs> well so i've gone back to like listen to everything just so i can get a rough idea of kind of your perfection mm. in, like, in terms of what you've released on spotify um yeah and your earliest release was um special Right? Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. really good. I actually, I was like, I was like, I don't know what to expect. Sometimes when you go back further enough for Odyssey, um, but I guess I was actually more surprised that, I guess, I mean, judging by like your content you're putting out on Instagram promoting yourself, I guess it was kind of expected that you haven't been out for maybe crazy amount of years. But 2021 as your first single on there is actually pretty yeah. recent. Like. yeah well i i mean i've always done like other projects over the years and um they've cool? always been part yeah so I, you know i would have done bands growing up and um yeah ma basically collaborations however once yeah i think i guess it must have just been before lockdown but i was like i just really wanted to put something out that was all me and I had full creative control over it. Um, Seashore was a song I did with a friend from uh, who I studied at university with, and uh, it was it was kind of like an essential part of the process as far as I had to do a song to get a, my name up on Spotify before I could release music. Um, uh, and also, he was just getting into it too, so he'd written this like lo-fi track, which wasn't necessarily the genre I was going for. But it was sort of my my shoe into Spotify, um, but uh, yeah, no. It, otherwise, yeah, quite recent. I mean, I don't think I actually ended up releasing my proper solo stuff until twenty twenty two, which is still very well, even more recent. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping hoping it will it will go on for a long time. Hopefully. <laughs> so do you, do you have like? A like a sort of backlog of little projects you've done for yourself so like you haven't really ended up releasing as well uh yeah you know? um i mean i again i there's there's a lot of um music that at one point in time i thought that, you know th this is the good stuff and like a bit of time passes and i'm like that was not that was not the good stuff and i think eventually i wrote uh easy tiger and there was just something about it that for me, whether I, I don't know if it's like lyrically or like the, the the production or the soundscape, but I was just like, I kind of felt like I'd found myself a bit in that, and I thought I like this, and I'm not getting bored of it, and I could write more of this, and then um, so everything I've written after that is pretty much something that I could or will potentially release. I've got, I have got a uh, sort of release schedule, as it were, uh, in for the for the next year or so okay. um but everything before that i've somewhat discounted on the basis of like the quality threshold but <laughs> which, is, which is great right because like as an artist especially early like if you're really feeling like i think creative process is really much about feeling the gut instinct of it like when you find yeah. your life being, there's just something about it that you just know it's so much more yeah than the others and other people yeah. have like a variety of different opinions but you just feel kind of feel right about it. And yeah. I was, and I was I was reacting the way I did because I was really excited because I was actually going to bring up that as well. Um, because I was saying that your lyrics are actually a particularly fascinating part for me. Um, okay. Very interesting, especially like the one that <laughs> side, which are your two most recent ones, right? From um, the CU. Um, and the ones I wrote down were Easy Tiger, Disguise and Death. Because I find yeah. some of the songs leading up to it the older lyrics were quite nice to listen to and you know they yeah. were all really good songs but easy tiger was kind of the one that really stood out as you kind of work your way through the years 
And yeah, exactly as you said, it kind of has a little bit of that kind of like soundscape and vibe to what the other two songs kind of eventually become. Yeah. And just the song lyrics were really fun as well, I thought. Yeah. Like pineapple, I think pineapple pizza, like. Yeah, I mean, up until like Easy Tiger, every song I'd written had probably centered around love or something. And there's that like thing where you can't escape coming back to that lyric or to that topic of relationships, which is natural because that's something I think everyone relates to. And it's just like a very common experience is that we have relationships. But um, I think also just with like it coinciding with lockdown or whatever, I think. Mm-hmm. everyone could like collectively started feeling a different emotion that we were related to and um i don't know i was also listening to a lot of um remy wolf if you do you know remy wolf at all i um, don't but i will look it up she's definitely worth checking out she's really she's got like such clever lyrics and they're always a bit off the wall or they've got some strange reference or just really they're really good lyrics and even like there's I, I mean there's so many artists but i love you know just having some like more random topics in there and giving you an excuse to sort of say random things a bit more like yeah pineapple pizza topping which apparently touched the nerve with people but like <laughs> um <laughs> well i mean um, controversial is just part of music lyrics well, exactly. I mean, I mean, it, it. I guess it worked in my favor in that sense. It was the vice. Are you a pineapple pizza kind of person? I am. I. I can tolerate it now. So I. I mean, are your favorite? No, no. I. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I don't. I. I personally find that savory and sweet are like should stay separate in my experience. But even that in itself, I think a lot of people would disagree with. So, um, I mean, like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> something for everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that's really cool. So I did have a lot of questions, actually, like you know, proper questions written up for you. And I guess with everything going on, I kind of got all excited and have just jumped at it since we talking about so many exciting things. But just to avoid you having to repeat yourself too much, I'll kind of <laughs> try to organize it a little bit more. Um, I guess we should probably circle back and do like explain in case people haven't seen the video and if they want to, yep. they can go to your room to look it up. But can you just explain where the name comes from for you for your for your band or artist name? Uh, uh, yeah, of course. Um, so a lot of artists that I listened to growing up uh, would say things. Well, they would say like suck it to me or something at the beginning of their song or sometimes they'll shout out in the middle some artists kind of like whisper it in the middle and like i don't know it never struck me as a, a band name at any point until like 2020 and then suddenly i was like i think i was just like doodling and then i wrote it down as one word i thought kind of looks kind of cool i like that it you you know it could look like another word or you know it's almost like a new thing when you put it all together like that um and I probably did a quick search on the web and I was like, there's no other artists called Socket to me, which is like a massive thing in itself because every name is taken. If yeah. you look up like, Anything I don't know, everything is, ta- everything is taken. I, I mean, I've been through it so many times, you know, you look up like uh, Chicken Nuggets is probably a band name or something, you know, like everything is taken. But I was like, that's, that's free. And then, you know, I thought, you know, I'm a cool guy. I'm going to put a little a lowercase i in there too. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I was just a random creative decision. But it was again, it's sort of like when when I've had like a song idea that I really liked, I just sort of had that in the back of my head for ages, and I never at any point thought, oh no, I don't like that anymore. So when it came out to choosing a name, it was quite a nice, easy thing to say. Okay, I'll go with that. Um, but it was funny when you said. Um, band name is that like so many people because i post these videos of me and there'll be like three of me the amount of people who say i can't wait to see you guys live or i think one person posted um oh i'd love to see uh an interview with each of you individually so we could get to know your different personalities or something (laughs) yeah yeah. um and i 
Yeah, yeah. And I responded saying, I can do that, but I don't think it will be what you expect. You because that, it's just me. That could be a great I don't tell them and then just do another video. So I know what well, I kept thinking. Of, so I have I have to do that. That would be a really good idea. Please but then they, they responded and in the tree again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, I think they thought I was being like really blunt and being like, I ain't making a video about that. And they're like, okay, don't worry then. And I was like, no, 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 no. I just mean it's just me. It's just me. Like there's not another, there's no other members. It's just me. But um Yeah, to be fair, but yeah, it is streamlined though, the editing. So it does feel really like because you know sometimes when you kind of try to do multiple versions by yourself, um yeah. it can seem a bit choppy, but yours looks really good and it's really good with the music. I, I appreciate I mean sometimes it's good sometimes the wind I don't know if you've seen it like some of the videos the wind catches the camera and it's shaking and you have these me's just going and I'm like I, I have to post it because I don't have more content right more now content. Uh, so you have like floating me's wobbling about or something and I don't know for some reason as well I don't know you probably wouldn't have looked because it's all the same across my socials but on YouTube they have this weird issue where like halfway through my videos they glitch so like i just suddenly stop it's i don't know the amount of, it's, it's like a almost like a strobe it's probably not very great but i don't know i keep having this issue with youtube oh. um which looks bizarre but yeah not a very fun fact but, but that was on youtube <laughs> yeah on youtube a few of my videos i've had to like redo them because they i don't know if it's i think it's just youtube yeah i don't know why youtube sometimes has upload issues as well i think or like mm. Just some of their technical stuff isn't always up to date. Yeah, I don't know. No. <laughs> that's really cool. So, like, they say <laughs> that stuff. That's that. That's something all of us is kind of saying soccer to me, but didn't actually mean anything. It's literally just what something in between the music. Yeah, I mean, I think the expression is like you know, sort of like a, a gimme, gimme the best you got sort of thing, or like Michael Jackson. I don't know. Me, I guess I, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes i guess it feels like it's got like a bit of a sexual undertone but i don't i don't think that's like the prominent meaning of it I hope. um but <laughs> but like i i always i don't know i like that it's kind of it feels a bit tongue-in-cheek it feels a bit like cheeky um, it does. it's very playful uh, i think and it matches your energy yeah yeah um so i'm yeah i i i i, I as far as I'm aware, it's just like, yeah, you know, suck it to me. It's like, give me the best you got. And mm. um, I don't know. It's just stuck in my head. So I was like, yeah, I'm going with that. Very, I'm going with that. very, um, very good in terms of creative energy as well. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Regard, that's really cool. Kind of yeah, like a yeah. dual meaning in the sense. Yeah, but, um, yeah, exactly. I will say like the little a small font, I definitely was a really nice touch. And it's kind of, because you know, sometimes when everything's, I guess, like, big fonts it's just a little bit kind of like yeah yeah face. but that just kind of breaks it up a little bit and it just makes it that much more interesting and yeah i, I think it probably enough. does explain also a bit why people have the confusion about it being like soccer tome or something though that's the only thing i'd say <laughs> so i wasn't really thinking about the the pronunciation perfect i was just like saying it the way that i thought it was easier for me to remember it so that's kind of yeah yeah but I yeah. kept adding an I like it to the beginning when I first started like writing your name. So I was trying to like, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, it's soccer to me. And I'm like, <laughs> wait, and I'm going back to Spotify. I'm like, wait, there's no it. I'm like, it's just yeah, yeah. soccer to me. And then I accidentally add a T, like an extra T or one left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, oh my God. I was like, how am I spelling it? So I'm happy to <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely a great name. I think um, a lot of people really enjoy it. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> so um, you said like you obviously like worked in a lot of like bands and like collaborative projects over the years. Yeah. Before you kind of started releasing your own stuff. But like, how did you kind of get into the music itself? Like in general, was it like, did someone around you play music or? Um, oh, God, oh, that was loud. Um, I, I think growing up, there weren't many um, people in my family that did music. Uh, however, I think it was when I started secondary school, I I, don't know, I just suddenly got like this urge to play uh, guitar and I loved Spanish. You know, I think I saw a YouTube video of a Spanish guitarist and I thought it was the coolest thing ever and started getting lessons. And I was the only 
kid who wanted to learn Spanish guitar, everyone else was learning, you know, classic rock. It would be like Led Zeppelin or ACDC or something, which worked in my favor because I ended up having just one-to-one -one lessons with this guitar teacher, which I, I loved. It meant I learned so much more and I probably became more passionate through that. Um, he ended up telling me more about songwriting and music theory. And I thought, oh, this is really interesting. And I was like, I have to start a band. I want to do songwriting. And it interested, the thought of writing music interested me way more than learning other people's music growing up, I think, at that point. Um, and then I formed a band and then joined another band, joined another band. And then I was just like, you know, I, I, I want to do music. So I just ended up making that my focus. I went to, went to college to study music. I went to uni to study music. Um, yeah, so from, probably from when I was about 11, I've just been like, hyper fixated on making that my career in one way or another yeah. um i mean it's it's a it's 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 got its you know it's it's good side and it's bad side it's um i love it and there's no feeling like writing a song i feel like i could be in the worst mood or depressed and i could write a song and it would make me feel so much better um but uh the it, it's it's not always a financially best option it's not always the best financial option to be a musician that's all i would say but um it depends and in the end you know there are actually way more opportunities to earn money in music but i think especially growing up when all your friends are starting to get jobs um you kind of have to be in it for the long run yeah yeah i, I mean i didn't i didn't want to do enough. it but for a certain degree to at least perform say like you can stuff at bars and all that kind of stuff yeah but i think when you're growing up you think that's the only option you think i have to go and perform at a, a bar or do an open mic night for free and then eventually i'll get a record deal or something i think you have that like that's that mindset kind of that yeah you're like that you'll get a big break but i think the reality is um there are so many opportunities within the music industry whether that's writing for uh sync catalogs or whether that is like session musicians or teaching music or uh i mean they're just there, there are there's so i would you know there's whatever it is but there there are alternatives and when you start finding out about those it's um it opens your mind about you know yeah, you how you can make that work for yourself yeah exactly and then you can always learn something new that's going to also benefit it always comes back to writing music and you can always carry on doing that um so yeah i think it is it can you know it can be a bit soul destroying if you're focused on doing like open mic nights every single night because yeah. it's you ultimately it's not probably what you want anyway so no exactly and open up like your pathways and keep it interesting yeah yeah exactly yeah and judging from what you said like playing in different bands where they like different kind of slightly different style i'm guessing as well like everyone's taste varies a little yeah, I mean, it, th there's probably always been an underlying indie or alternative sort of vibe to it all. Um, but, or like even like a bit of a pop sort of feeling to it. Mm. And I think, um, yeah, I mean, this is just the first project where I can sort of kind of mm, fully focus on what yeah. I want, I guess, selfishly. But I can just be like, oh no, I I like this, and that's going to be like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be in the alternative for you to flesh out every sector inside, like the track, like every part down to all the editing and everything. Yeah, like, yeah, it's that's, that's it's, a lot more to fill in. Yeah, I mean, it's but it's it is so much fun. You you know, I almost feel guilty that I have so much fun getting to do this sort of thing because it makes it feel like less of a job. But at the same time, I'm like. It's just so, it's just great. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so I was going to ask you as well, I mean, I guess you had a few like clips on um, Instagram that kind of asked around, like, as you described, indie or pop, like how do yes. you realize, like your genre, like how would you, if you had to describe it now in terms of, I guess, concept or genre, like, is there sort of um, something you feel like it's set in stone or it's more like something that you're evolving? Wouldn't mind changing later on? I mean, I think in general, like, I find that the, 
it, ultimately I'd probably call it indie. Um, and but generally people sort of change the name of what it is over the years. Like it used to just be indie pop or something, and then it became bedroom pop, and then it's sort of I don't know. And now people are saying like all music, but they kind of all sort of like weave in and out of each other a bit, I think. But I don't know. I've always had in my head. There's a song called Diane Young by Vampire Weekend, okay. which I loved when it came out. And I, I kind of always felt like my music is like, if that song was a genre, that's the genre of my music. I can't, I don't know a better way to describe it, but just the sort of like, that energy and the, the the instrumentation of it sort of being a band but kind of produced and poppy and more in your face i guess it's just yeah i don't know there's i yeah. think i could probably have that as a reference for most of my music in some way which maybe sounds like a weird thing but <laughs> yeah, no that makes a lot of sense i guess like maybe if someone was going to write about a small description of your music style. Maybe that's what they use from now on as a reference because yeah. there are some people who describe certain people's music through other people's music as part of the description. Yeah, Just yeah, yeah. I mean, music is always evolving. There's always going to be new styles. It gets mm. somewhat confusing. Mm. Yeah, um, I mean, someone someone called my music uh, indie sleaze recently, mm -hmm. which I've tried playing with in my videos and putting it in the caption, but. Um, I think Indie Sleaze is essentially 2010 or the 10s decade of Indie. Okay. And like some, I don't know yeah. whether like, you know, so like MGMT, um, it's the only ref, uh, the only artist I can think of in that genre, but, it, but that sort of sound, I guess. So I don't know, quite a few people have said that. So yeah. Indie sleaze. I don't know how long that genre will last, or if that will be forgotten. But maybe that's me. I don't know. <laughs> it's fun. I mean, like I love like the videos coming out with all these like different questions and different kind of interactions. I think that's like a really fun <laughs> part of like your interact, um, like the yeah. whole like, Instagram account. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. but like what you brought up is quite interesting because I did think, I mean, I didn't really think about categorizing per se because I think that's kind of like a versatile thing and. I actually quite yeah, yeah. Because I just really like to change the style. It's just kind of like people growing as they age, you know, yeah. doing different things. Maybe I mean, like for example, Beyonce has kind of gone off completely on a different direction. Yeah. <laughs> so, you never know, right? Mm. Um, but I did want to say, like, I feel like your like I really enjoy the way you kind of like dress up and like the locations you pick for all your music and just the overall like style of the music. Um, but like what comes, what jumps out at me is it has like almost like a nostalgic factor to it. I'm not sure what it okay. is. Okay. Like the way, like I guess the colors where you choose to like, uh, like that's kind of what it gives. Yeah, me. I, I, yeah, no, I think, I think I do. I mean, for me, like, I mean, growing up anyway, like playing in like fields and trees and stuff, that I guess has an element of nostalgia and it's not something I've done until I've started doing these videos, I'm like constantly going out and like, oh, wow, this is great because I'm discovering new places and going for walks that I wouldn't usually do. Um, and, you know, I can still do something, you know, productive. Um, but then also, I guess there's an element of, I don't know, I've been growing out a mullet and stuff and that sort of vague, like, aesthetic of, I don't even know what decade that's associated with anymore, but I'm sure that gives, like, nostalgia. But, yeah, I guess um, it's like a mix of child wildness like a uh, wildness not as yeah. in nature but wildness as in you know kids are kind of like a little unhinged sometimes and then yeah. like kind of like creative energy and not <laughs> thinking, like because you know the whole book's so about everything has to be productive behind everything yeah. you do as you kind of mature but yeah, yeah. Like that energy of going out and you just oh yeah i'll go for work or go explore yeah kind of i think also i mean there's probably that thing of that i do my best to only go out when it's like clear blue sky or you know a nice day which is a rare thing here in England but um I think you kind of have that sometimes have that concept of when you're younger it's always sunny it's always a nice day and you know you, you know that rose tinted glasses thing um so I'm I guess maybe that kind of gives a bit of a feel of like Oh yeah, yeah well, nostalgia That's or something. True. I but, actually forget the fact that um, your weather's probably not always sunshine. No. Like, 
I get like one day a month to film, so. <laughs> That's that's you know, that's something that people really need to appreciate. <laughs> um, so, I'm just sitting through some of the things that I've already covered with you. Um, nice. You have in, well, I mean, inspiration as a music artist, probably is pretty much what you covered before. Yeah, so sorry, inspiration for inspiration as a music artist. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, as I said before, there's Remy Wolf, who I would definitely recommend checking out. I do have a playlist on my Spotify with like that I have very much thought out as far as like songs that I'm like, I love or their influences to me. But yeah, Remy Wolf, uh, there's an artist called Jorney, um, who is awesome. I had a brief love affair with Unknown Mortal Orchestra. I really love them. Um, trying to think, REM. I mean, REM, one of those bands that have just been with me my whole life. I've loved them probably since I got into music at like 11. Um, and as in 11 years old, not this morning, but <laughs> um, I, yeah, I mean, they're not for everyone, but I would always recommend REM. Um, there's an also an artist called Laurel. She's really cool. She's got some really good songs. Very like nostalgic kind of 80s synth vibe. Um, yeah, I mean, those are some artists, artists off the top of my head, but they are definitely worth checking out. They're so good. Oh, also, you know, actually, I have two friends who I really love the music called Youth Sector and Paul Tomlin. They both make really great music. Um, and it's in the same sort of genre or soundscape as me um but they're really cool again worth checking out and influence me and i've worked with them so that's awesome. yeah i mean that's I'll the long the answer for, i'll get the link for that and definitely like share it as well and check it out myself. that would be great because, yeah definitely i mean i'm all about like checking out new music all the time i actually don't listen to as much contemporary i guess like contemporary like pop artists anymore because yeah, There's just so many more artists out there, and like I find it, yeah, and it's it's hard not to be saturated by that music anyway. So like you're gonna hear it somewhere. Whereas like yeah, it's, I, it's what I find exciting. Like for yeah, example, definitely. Like, artists like you, sometimes I might not listen through to the whole song right away. Just add you to the Spotify, and then next time I'm out on a commute, I'd be like, this is what I get to listen to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. It's, it's more exciting. accessible now, I think, isn't it? It's yeah. um, you sort of have a pick and mix of loads of songs as opposed to being limited to what the radio will give you you know those like five songs they play on repeat so yeah. it's um no it's definitely a good thing everyone's got their sort of own way of listening now i think yes yeah. and then it's, yeah. it, it definitely becomes a lot harder to describe what music you like because there's just huge yeah you know, yeah oh, I, like this, I like this too yeah exactly and you never know what's going to be the next big song it could be literally like a an acoustic mandolin song or it could be you know yeah beyonce doing country music so it could, it could be anything <laughs> yeah which is the cool part about music it's really cool exactly music. yeah like anyone it's amazing something else used to get there something else yeah and and there's an audience for everyone now i think you know like whatever you make or whatever you're doing there's someone out there who's gonna love that i think and mm. as long as you're being authentic and creating something then you're doing something pretty amazing so and like it, it, i see if we can i guess we can it, it went so fast i was like yeah i was like oh okay um, um yeah so i guess going off uh you were listing the lattices and i guess we had a yeah. yeah, I can't remember what we're, we're talking about influences, I think. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about music influences. Um, so um I guess like going off that actually, there's a there's a few random questions I thought would be pretty fun. They're kind of more alternate questions, I guess. Um yeah, hit me. Was, like a song, you can choose any song that you yeah. you were the one that has written it, what would it be? Obviously not your a song, song that a, a song, song that what sorry? Any song that exists in the world that you wish you were the one to have written? The one to have written? Oh, um, 
That's a very, very difficult question. Mm. It's a very good question. Um, I guess probably Diane Young by Vampire Weekend, just because I base so much of my identity on that song, perhaps. I don't know. Um, then again, if I'd written it, maybe I would have lost my identity because I wouldn't know who I was. It's a good um, question, isn't it? It is. Um, it's kind of like uh, that film Yesterday or whatever it was called about the Beatles, where that guy goes back and writes all the songs. Um, yeah. So... Uh, it's such a weird place to be yeah I guess yeah either that or like a Beatles song you know like a decent big song you know yeah, without it's being too greedy very long standing yeah so it's really hard in uh, like an mm. interview circumstance not to ask what would you yeah, do? What would you do, you do? <laughs> um, do you? I mean, obviously, as a sing, singer, you sing a lot. Um, do you sing in the shower? Rarely. I'm Rarely. not much of a shower singer. Yeah, like, I'm the sort of person that, I mean, I'm getting better, but I need, like, a full, empty house. I need to know no one's in the house, no one's around. And then I will maybe like belt out a song. Yeah. Um, I probably whistle in the shower, maybe. Whistle, I'm yeah. more of a whistler. I feel like it's more like natural or something. Yeah. I mean, you always see these people in X Factor and they're like, oh, I just sing in the shower. And then they're amazing. And I think, well, now you've made me insecure about singing in the shower. So. Yeah, it's the always yeah, the yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because like I can I can relate as well when you said about the whole being like shy about you know like when people are watching because like I yeah. when I really get into songs I like I you know for example like if I'm listening to a song I would probably want to kind of like oh yeah once it gets really going you kind of want to lip sync to it but when, yeah. you when you're walking outside if you're grocery shopping or like walking on the street the mouth actually <laughs> does still make noises when you're like <laughs> singing anything and I realized that once when I was like sharing a bunk bed with someone and I was like and then he was just like yeah. and it's just like what are you <laughs> and I'm like you can't help it that when you're walking down the street you're listening to music you feel a bit like a main character but you forget that no one else can hear that like in a movie but you're just like, like yeah or like when you're sad and you're leaning on the bus movie. window and you're like and everyone else is looking at you like what, what's he doing the rain um. down. <laughs> you're just like yeah, I'm so mysterious. Yeah, <laughs> and the other people are, is that man or right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I guess like everyone's just thinking the same thing, but it just it still makes you so like self conscious about it. Yeah, but I do love like I, the music does have the power to like make you move your body or move, you know interact in that way. Even it brings you out of your comfort zone and gives you that confidence. Um, even uh, even when it might be a little bit embarrassing sometimes but yeah, like walking down the aisles or like making a cup of tea just feels so much more interesting when you're listening to like yeah music yeah everything's better with a with a theme tune or something i think I'm sure you like that. <laughs> um would you have like a dream performance venue a dream venue yeah like somewhere you kind of really like I was thinking for like, wow, that'd be great to perform here one day. Um, I guess I don't know. One's a real place, and I, that would be in REM, being my favorite band of all time. They come from a place called uh, Athens, Georgia, and there's just like some iconic places they've played. One being the Forty Watt Club which I think may have closed down, I'm not sure. But that would be like a really cool place just to fulfill that childhood dream. Um, otherwise, as nice as I think, like, I'm sure like playing like the O2 or Glastonbury or Coachella or like a big festival would be, I'd love the idea of just having like, because I see people on Instagram doing it as well, but they have like bean bags. It's like a really cozy room. Maybe there's like a little fire going or something or whatever it is. And it's just like really 
like a small intimate venue kind of and but it's all people who really just appreciate that music or they know the words or something i think yeah. that would be um the dream if i could just do loads of those um that would that would probably be ideal but so that's just like a a, a venue in my head at the minute so <laughs> yeah like i mean throwing out ideas a house like a tree house could be a very cool <laughs> yeah. yeah give me like yeah, really nice big ones with, like, <laughs> yeah. but actually there are a lot of really cool ones yeah i think it's yeah. just trees will give me ptsd at this point i think so yeah probably. i'm being stuck in them <laughs> just like have like multiple riders everywhere yeah, yeah. But, yeah i guess like i can't remember what the name is for that but like the it's like house something i think but yeah there's a lot of artists doing that kind of really acoustic and like versions of renditions of their songs which oh are, yeah, i like the the, the tiny desk sort of things yeah or um yeah yeah, yeah I, those yeah, are really cool well because i guess like you can't fit too many um, instruments or uh, you know yeah um, equipment in those areas because it's just yeah there's a lot of wiring and... yeah, yeah yeah i think if if you know once i um get live shows and that sort of thing sorted and have um you know a good live setup with a band I'd, I'd love to have a band uh again that would i think i would enjoy every gig scenario having that confidence you know when that sort of camaraderie where you know you can trust these other musicians around you to mm -hmm. put on a great performance it's um it's such a great experience so yeah i mean those things things like tiny desk or doing any of these performances only make me a little bit nervous when i imagine doing them completely by myself and it's mm. all reliant on me like playing because my songs yeah. aren't acoustic they're not built uh, necessarily around that sort of thing so um i'd love yeah. to yeah you also see like yeah. artists doing loops themselves at the beginning of certain shows yeah yeah and that's also a lot of pressure i think i've seen one person's video she had the device pretty much play up the moment she was about to start the loop she managed to go oh, really? there. She was just like, oh, yeah. It's always great. <laughs> and she's just like, kind of walking to the crowd and she's like, you know, it's always great when technology plays up at the very beginning. Of <laughs> I mean, I've tried. I, I have got a loop, like a loop station. Um, and I started practicing my songs on that. I mean, it may be something I do anyway initially, but it is it is a lot of pressure like yeah, compared yeah, to yeah. just having musicians where you're like more intuitive with each other because you are locked in like you know if you're singing and you cough and then it's stuck in the loop and it's just coughing every five seconds you're like oh, oh this is horrible uh, that's when i uh, started like recording i was so nervous and trying to race through like you, know, you kind of start speaking faster and faster sometimes when you're doing speeches yeah yeah, yeah. And, like mouth noises and you're just like oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's probably most of the questions I had actually had here. Um, oh, no, that's brilliant. Which is great because I mean, we already ran a bit longer than I had a proposed. Yeah, I was going to say, I've got, I've actually got another call in about 10 minutes. So I probably yeah, ought so to um, head like off. Um, I just have one last final question, which I think would be really important. Um, do you have like sort of an upcoming full album fleshed out like in the works or like as you said you plan kind of like a year's music is it more like a single kind of working slowly towards it i i do uh, i mean um what's the word um on like the lowdown i do have an album coming at some point and it's 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 something i'm very excited about um, the concept that you all kind of kind of put together. I, I was quite quiet last year because I was fleshing out the whole concept. Like I am, I am ready with everything essentially now um, to to sh 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 almost share it, and it's sort of working my way towards that, and just building up a fan base that is going to be uh, hungry for that from me because I'm I'm still quite small, I guess, at the moment. But yeah, I am, I am. I am that is in the works. That is definitely in the works. And I'm I am very excited about everything that I have to share about that. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, because I'm like, if there's like all these fans coming in right now, especially like I can see all the comments building up from like videos mm. that 
I was probably like, you know, early to, and now there's like hundreds of comments, I think, you know, it's like, it, it's crazy. Um, and it's very exciting to see how that it is. And, and everything does tie in, like, as far as like the artwork and stuff, it is, it, it does, I don't know, well, it will make sense when all of that comes together. It will. So it's, uh, it is thought out. <laughs> then maybe some opportunities for merchants. Much there is i have i have got merch but i just haven't yeah. made a video promoting it uh i've only got a couple bits but it happened in this room but they've they've vanished i don't know where they are, <laughs> I don't know where they are. i've made some yeah. uh so on on my uh single artworks you know i've got like the mask i've got the fingers yeah um, really cool. um and i mean it's that's sort of all central to the theme but uh it's an embroidered patch and I got big ones made for the artwork, but I've also got some little small ones I'm selling on my TikTok and my Bandcamp store, uh, which have an iron on backing. So you can put them on like your jacket or your jumper. Mm. I just need yeah. to promote it. That's, that's my promotion. That would be really good here for Australia because we're slowly marching into kind of colder weather. So, I mean, so <laughs> exactly. Only, <laughs> only, you know, also in, the, in, the, in England, that would be obviously a very, very good choice. <laughs> that's awesome yeah. um, do you have anything you would particularly like to say to your fans uh, I mean I always just I feel like I always want to say that they're amazing and that I'm so grateful that they're listening to my music and that they're supporting me because I don't get to do what I do without them and uh, I hope you stick around because it's going to be one hell of a year hopefully hope <laughs> i think so and it's just began i mean technically it's only april it is it is only april so we've got we've got the bulk of the year and the new tax year has just begun so i mean we've got the financial year as well i mean Ooh. so and then <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah right. it's gonna be good that's awesome yeah you should definitely um i'll email you again after this as well just yeah send me, free. send me like the playlist um just because yeah doing that stuff. and also mm -hmm. link to merch if you have like enough left um that you yeah of course bring up for us new fans um otherwise thank you so much for your time and opportunity no. yeah yeah thank you so much for having me and for reaching out i really appreciate it. i'm glad we finally got on the call and we got we got the audio working and everything as well yeah, so it'd be good if i can figure out like if there's something wrong with that or if it's just not compatible because i've read some people having issues with the ad as well or, like just some audio device. oh really yeah i i every time i've gone on zoom there's always it's either me or the other person who can't get their mic working and i don't ever know why even now i don't know how we got this working so I mean, it's at least two or three years. I think. A bit on <laughs> so, never know hardware, software, something goes. <laughs> but yeah, um, otherwise, yeah, I, I think it would be great as well also to, I guess, in a year's time or, you know, six months time, just like to do another one if you have time for it. Um, definitely, to, definitely, uh, yeah. And especially with new work coming out, it would be really cool to hear more about it. Yeah, definitely. We'll stay in touch and we'll um we'll we'll do this again at some yes. point. And you will see um, lots in the comments anyway. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. I won't keep you too long. I'm sure you yes, I'm gonna head off. But yeah, thanks again so much for having me, Tim. Oh Timmy, sorry. And uh we'll uh yeah, we'll keep in touch and I'll send you some links. Yeah, and I'll get through editing and it should be up within this week. Cool, brilliant. Yeah, just send it my way or let me know or tag me, whatever it is, and we'll uh and I'll, I'll check it out. Thank you so much. Take care. Night. Uh, morning. Well, yeah. uh, lunchtime. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Afternoon. It's like nine o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah. Later. Sleep. <laughs> yeah. Sleep well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.